So thank you, Kim and Alessandra, for giving us some of your time. Can you start by introducing yourselves and telling us a little bit about what you study at university? So, um, hi, I am Kim Faruja. I am 24 and I am currently um, doing my master's in structured engineering. I am in the architecture course and the course is divided in three and I am in my last part of the, the whole course. I'm in my first year. Uh, hi, I'm Alessandro Bianco. Uh, currently in my second year, uh, I'm studying undergraduate um, in the Faculty of Engineering for Mechanical Engineering. So how did you find out about the call for this uh, competition and how did the team come together for the project? I mean, the call came about, um, um, personally, my dad introduced me to it. He, uh, he mentioned it to me and I was definitely interested in, in it. And he told me about the other members and that we were going to be uh, like a joint uh, proposal, basically. And um, that's how I was sort of brought up into it. Um, from my end, it was similar as well. Um, I had been introduced to Professor Lina Bianca throughout my course and uh, I found out about it through himself as well. And I was really interested in it. Um, I looked forward to working with the whole team as well. It was um, an interesting collaboration. And can you tell us a little bit about how the shortlisted proposal came about and maybe what um, what you were collectively inspired um, by? I mean, that specific um, um, proposal, it was definitely centered more around the sort of familial aspects uh, of Oliver Fujiri we try to encompass his uh, more sort of familial beliefs, inclusion and things like that within the proposal. But I think that was definitely the main inspiration for our shortlisted proposal. Yes, it's true. And in continuation to what Alessandra is saying, we try to um, represent him as one with the people. So we try to show his character as mu as much as possible in the in the monument itself it could be easily read by anyone who who sees it there's an element of symbolism as well but like like alessandra saying we will be able to explain it further later on and in a nutshell what made this proposal unique in the sense that i know that there were other people um involved on the team and i know that you also asked for the help of a sculptor so what made this proposal unique? I mean, definitely one of the main main things that made it unique was the fact that we were the only joint uh, joint team, the only joint proposal, and the only one um, who was half comprised of women and half comprised of students as well of the University of Malta itself. So that was definitely something very unique in our proposal. It's true, there's an element of um, different mindsets coming together, different opinions, and it shows in the in the final result, I think, as well. It, it, it differs from, from the rest. And what was your knowledge of, of Professor Frigiri going into this project? And, and maybe how did that change by the time you, you, you submitted um, your proposal? Uh, personally, I'd met him um, a couple of months before his passing. Um, I'd met him for another um, sort of small project and uh, my uh, my perspective of him was definitely it was definitely there throughout brainstorming sessions and things like that for the proposal and I mean going out of it I think I, I have a more sort of immersed idea of him while before I did know sort of his character, not very in depth though. Um, I definitely feel like I, I got in tune with his more familial side, his ideologies and uh, those kinds of aspects. I agree with Alessandra as well. I've never had the opportunity to speak with him. I've only seen him a couple of times passing by at university, but I've never actually met him and spoke with him. But like she was saying, when we were brainstorming and researching about him, I could see more of his character and himself in depth. I think many people knew him through his writing, no? As in, mm -hmm. 
um, he wrote about personal things that he, he wrote from personal experience. So that kind of made him um, more approachable in a way. So it even allowed people to get to know him even after his passing, which is exactly. a great thing because he, he left a, a great legacy. That is what we try to incorporate as well in our proposals. So what do you think of the winning submission? What What's your opinion about that? I mean, at the end of the day, it's the artist's thought of how they could represent um, Oliver Frigiri. So I definitely respect the idea. I think it's uh, it's quite an artistic view. And I mean, from what I've seen, I look forward to seeing it, to going to see it in person. Exactly, I agree with Alessandro. It's, it's his artistic representation of of Oliver Fijiri. And uh, finally, maybe a, a question that has to do more with um, your being university student. So how has your university education um, uh, better prepared you for, um, for working on, on this submission? And what kind of other opportunities you hope um, you'll get while, while studying at the university? I mean, with respect to how it's prepared, myself at least, uh, definitely through the two years I've I've been there, we've had a lot of group assignments. So I've been in multiple group settings. And so that definitely helped quite a bit. We've also done certain, we've studied certain terminology to use and when and where to use it. So that helped in the more sort of formal side of it. And I mean, it definitely also, this project also helped my university studies because it, it kind of helped me to to see how how I could communicate better with others. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a, it was a, it was teamwork. So that definitely helps at every stage. I agree from my end as well. I have been exposed to very similar um, assignments and um, design proposals, sort of, my end more architectural, but um, the university work has helped me as well, even in terms of representing the work, how to represent it technologically as an artboard, for example, so that was very helpful. And like Alessandra was saying, this opportunity was helpful for me to understand better how um, an idea can develop and how to develop it further to create a final product. And I want to highlight, as a former student of the university myself, um, how important it is to pursue such opportunities while you're studying. Because, I mean, it's, it's important to get the theoretical background and to, to conduct research, but the, it's also equally important to get experience alongside that. So by the time you maybe pursue a career, you know, and join the, wor the workforce, um, so to speak, it's you're not sort of thrown at the deep end and you already have actual experience on, on how to submit a proposal, on how to be in a team and, and how to be a team player. And, you know, you get all of those skills that you might not get from uh, studying individually or, or, or writing an assignment. I think that's a very important uh, element of the journey at university. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, experience is just as important as theory. So from what we learned, how at the end of the day, through our lines, through engineering and architecture, we're definitely going to be working with other people. So I think it definitely helped through communicational aspects, how to move forward with designs like Kim earlier mentioned as well, and how to actually see an idea fully through from the beginning. So that definitely 100% helped. Even when discussing with other people who may be dif different from your field, you have to appreciate their opinions and their thoughts, even if you might not agree, for example, but you get opinions from others, you get more research, as in you ask people for information, people who can guide you on things you are not maybe most knowledgeable about. So I think it, it's quite helpful. Thank you, Kim, and thank you, Alessandra, for giving us your time for this interview. And thank you to our Newspoint viewers for watching.